Hey guys, it's Lisa from the thelogfarmhouseonboon.com and I have been getting tons of requests about showing our garden tour. I talked to you back in, I believe it was March, and told you about the plans for the garden and did some seed starting here on the channel. A lot of people have asked me for an update. I've shared some of that in my Instagram stories, but I haven't officially came here on YouTube. I don't do a lot of things outside my house and I want to kind of tell you guys, first of all, a little bit about where I live. Now, a lot of people have made the assumption that I live on this really big farm with tons of acreage. So I share a little bit about this in our debt-free story and how we paid off our house in less than five years. We strongly desire to live way out in the country and have you know, a big old farmhouse on tons of acreage, but we are very committed to not going back into debt. We like to keep our lifestyle just as simple and minimal as possible, which involves you know, no debt because that would make things more complicated and just add to stress and bills. So because that is our goal and desire, we are holding off on our dream of building our dream home or buying the right property. We've looked at a lot of things, found some nice places, but they're usually not something that we have the cash for right now. And so until we can pay cash for something, we are going to stay right here. And so for those of you who've asked, you know, what all farm animals we have, we have chickens, we have five chickens, we have a big garden. I've tried to convince my husband to get goats, but we literally live on a quarter of an acre. So we don't have space for things like that. We live our simple lifestyle right here in town you can probably hear cars going by but i think that hopefully i've encouraged some of you who feel like you need to live you know deep in the country to have this simple like lifestyle that i like to promote and talk so much about it's totally not true we live right here in town and grow a lot of our food get our own eggs and all of that on about a quarter acre in the city so let's go on a little tour of our garden first row here is our jardale pumpkins we planted these from seed and they are really coming up. These ones back here, I don't really know what happened to them, but I'll try to give you a little bit of scale with my hand. They're huge. So big. There's our cat hiding. <laughs> I cannot wait till this fall to have so many pumpkins to decorate the house with. Um, the next row over is our flower row. Now I just actually added some more seeds because a lot came up, but um, also there's a lot that didn't, a lot of area that still needs stuff. So I was able to add some more seeds. Hopefully they'll come up. It's not too late right now. I'm gonna have all of these zinnias. They're really starting to take off. Next row we have zucchini and there's actually quite a few that are coming on and getting ready to harvest probably by about next week. Once they start like this, it's not long before you can actually pick them. I make sure to not let my zucchini get too big because they have a tendency to overgrow like crazy and then they're just not as good. They're more tasty when they're little like that. Next over is a row of carrots and they're kind of getting crowded out by the zucchini. Hopefully some will be ready to harvest soon. All of that so far we planted from seed. Now I did grab some pepper plants from a local place. They actually, um, I just filled some more in yesterday because there were a few areas that I felt like needed some more. Our local greenhouse place had them at this point in the season for buy one get one free. So I filled some more in but usually I'll find that things get overgrown and I forget just how big stuff gets, but looks like we need a little bit of water over here. I'll probably do that later. Then on the next row, some beets we planted. Again, I felt like I didn't plant them close enough together, so I ended up adding some pepper plants to fill in just because there was a little extra space. Then we have started to put cages around our tomato plants. Next over, we have cucumbers and like the zucchini they are really starting to come on and we'll probably have some soon I don't know about where you guys live but cucumber zucchini pumpkins squash all things that are kind of squash related grow really well here this is our green bean row didn't look like much a few weeks ago, but it's really came on. We're gonna be super busy picking those. 
Got a row of sugar snap peas that's kind of getting crowded out by the cabbage. Then we have some greens. They did really well for us all spring, but I think we're gonna take them out soon and add something else because they're starting to taste bitter, which they do later in the season. They don't really tolerate summer heat so well. And then we'll actually replant another greens area closer to the fall, so around August. Then I have my herb garden. So I have parsley and some basil. I scattered some more basil seeds toward the back of the garden, which I'll show you. And they all just took off, so I've got like a little basil patch, but got some fresh oregano as well. More greens and more cabbage. Got some broccoli. Let me show you my basil patch. And there's my basil, which I love. I'll be making so much pesto and bruschetta. Somebody told me I should make a bunch of bruschetta. Looking really good. I just threw a handful of seeds back here. And it totally just took off. I also grabbed from my local store, they had the dahlias on sale. I actually grabbed these at the beginning of the year and planted them. And then these tiny little plants here, I just got yesterday because they were kind of clearancing out all their plants. So with any luck, they will be this large in a few weeks. And dahlias make beautiful cut flowers, as well as the zinnias and cosmos I planted. I am excited to make some bouquets. So I'm totally losing daylight now. It's getting close to nine o'clock, but I wanted to show you guys where our garden's at here in June. I'll definitely be popping on here in July, talking about some harvest stuff, making flower arrangements, as well as fermenting some of the vegetables and how we utilize those things, as well as maybe some garden fresh recipes. I'll keep you guys along on the gardening journey. I know a lot of you wanted to know how we do things. I wanted to point out some other things that we did this spring. One, we tilled in some horse manure from my parents' property and that helped to fertilize everything. Other than that, we didn't use any fertilizer at all. And then for pest control, I actually had a problem earlier in this season. All of my beans had little holes in the leaves as well as my tomatoes. And I kind of was worried thinking that they were gonna be, you know, lost. So I did some research online and I found that peppermint essential oil works really, really great for those garden bugs. I already kind of knew that because I use them in my house to keep ants off the counters and out. They're really repelled by the peppermint essential oil. So I mixed a few drops into a bottle with some water and sprayed the seedlings. Totally worked if you're having an issue like that. I've also read that if peppermint essential oil doesn't work if you have bugs that are stronger than that, you can also use oregano essential oil. Now I just added a new page to my blog all about what essential oils I use here on a regular basis because a lot of you have asked me a lot of questions about that, what brand we use. I have a couple of free eBooks on essential oils. It's all on one page, so I'll link that below so you can check that out. Also, a lot of you asked me about the straw when I posted this on Instagram stories. So the reason we have the straw is to keep the weeds down. Now, the first month-ish of gardening is actually pretty rough because the weeds come up just as fast as the seedlings and you have to do a lot of heavy weeding if you're gonna do an organic garden. This lasts like two weeks. My husband's been out every night for over an hour weeding the garden. Once all the plants are about six inches tall or taller, you can just put straw around everything and now the weed problem will pretty much be non-existent. So it's kind of rough that first month of gardening, but after that, if you use straw or newspaper or something to put around the established plants, that works great. If you wanna skip that step altogether and you wanna take kind of like the really easy approach to gardening, you could just not plant anything from seed and just get established plants from a local like nursery or something and then just put the weed control barrier around that. We planted most of our plants from seeds except for some pepper plants and so we had to wait until they came up and it can be a little bit tricky, especially if you're a new gardener or if you're planting something new. I will do like a Google image search to see you know, what the seedling I planted looked like. So let's say you have a row of carrot seeds and you've never planted carrots before, you can do a Google image search to see so that you know that you're not picking the seedling, but you're picking all the weeds. Because if your garden is good and healthy, the weeds are gonna love it just as much as your seedlings. After they get established, plants themselves cut out the weeds. So for example, there's not gonna be any weeds underneath those pumpkin plants because they're so massive. I jump on Instagram stories pretty regularly. So if you wanna see more of a day by day, kind of the garden progressing and then daily life stuff, you can follow me on there if you're new here please hit that subscribe button i make two new videos every week sometimes more on food from scratch natural living and a handmade home thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse mm -hmm.